Huh. We play a lot of practical jokes on each other. Do I'm you really? If you did that to each other with on the uh, on Star Trek with the other co with your co-stars. No, DeForest never played any practical jokes. He was a southern gentleman. <laughs> and Leonard. Didn't play any practical jokes either. <laughs> that left just soon. <laughs> uh, so I would play practical jokes. Yes, I, I did. I did play practical jokes. I, I loved, especially love to play practical jokes on Leonard. Yeah. And anymore, he, he's very solid. You know, he's a very serious man, a very wonderful actor, a wonderful friend, very serious. Subject to a good practical joke. <laughs> you get some of these really serious, you're going to screw them up really good. <laughs> good practical joke. Details! Uh, well, I, you know, the, the one that comes to mind is um, lunch. You know, uh, you work from 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. And then you work to eight, nine o'clock in the evening. The only time you, you can eat is lunch. So when the assistant director says lunch, everybody runs for lunch. Time to go. And and then when we shot uh, uh, in those years at, at the Paramount Studios, our, our three stages they gave us three sound stages like about this size, and we had sets in them and everything like that. And, but they were way, way up there. And the commissary is way down over here. And, and they gave us a half hour for lunch. So if they call lunch, you had to get down to the commissary. But not only that, you had to be like the first 10 in line. Because if you got longer than that, the line took long. The half hour was over, you had to get back. They were very, very uh, strict about leaving on time and getting back on time. Because every minute is like, Time. So that half hour was very precious for those of us who wanted to eat. <laughs> so, and I, I used to run track and I played football. I was, Leonard was a big, tall, and lanky guy, you know. So when they called lunch, in fact, by the time the guy had lunch, I was gone. <laughs> I raced down there. And I got to the commissary boy, and by the time Leonard got there, I, I was on my way out. So Leonard bought himself a bike. <laughs> and the guy would call, the first assistant would go, and I was out. Leonard ran, got on his bike, pedaled his bike, got there before I did. <laughs> he got there before I did. <laughs> so one day, I brought a chain. How oh dare and, and, and one of those locks, the American lock, they used to have a, an ad where they, somebody would shoot a 45 at the lock and it still wouldn't break. One of those unbreakable American locks. <laughs> and I wound that chain around the bike and I put it against a fire hydrant and I locked it. <laughs> and then the second assistant called, no! And I'm out! Later time! He jumps on his bike! <laughs> I'm eating lunch, I don't answer that guy. <laughs> so the next day, you can plot later, I'm just holding my hope. He brings bolt cutters. <laughs> and he cuts the chain. He beats me. The following day, I put his bike. Well, you know, in a studio like that, there's a lot of people who steal things. <laughs> I didn't want Leonard's bike to be stolen. <laughs> so I put it in my dressing room for safekeeping. <laughs> Look! 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 I'm out. Let her talk. Where's my bike shredder? <laughs> Later, it's in my dressing room. Goes to the dressing room to get his bike. I didn't tell him. I had my two Dobermans in the <laughs> It ended one day when I put the bike up in the ceiling. And I had the lighting guys train searchlights. <laughs> and when they called lunch, the stage went black, the searchlights went up, 
Mas é Nemo! 